All right, welcome back from spring break. Hopefully all had a good restful period and uh, everybody's coming back healthy. And we are ready to get started with Revit 2016. So you should all have this on your computers and working order. Uh, I've placed three files in Blackboard uh, online for this first week uh, to download. Uh, there'll be a lot more coming up uh, later on. And what I'd like you to do, first of all, is uh, in your textbook, I want you to go through Chapter 1. And I'll go through a little bit of the highlights of it today and go through kind of the interface. Sometimes the best way to uh, introduce yourself to some of this material is to uh, look at a, a, a building or a, a model that's already been done and kind of take it apart. And that's what we're going to do, and that's what the first chapter goes through. So let's go ahead and start uh, Revit. It may start, it is quite a large program, so it may take a little bit of time to get it up and running. And what you'll find with Revit, this is a building information modeling software. So it has some quasi-intelligence. We put it in there, but it still has um, intelligence so it knows or it's been instructed on where it needs to be within the model. And you'll see how that works in, in a few minutes. Um, uh, when we start talking about architectural drawings that are going to be printed out, there is specific orders that those go out in. Um, there's architectural drawings, mechanical drawings, plumbing drawings, electrical drawings. They're all overlaid one on top of the other. And Revit is a tool that we can use to do that quite efficiently, including topographical work that we'll do a little later on in the semester. But primarily, we're going to look at this from the architectural standpoint. Even though we know you're civil engineers, it's still a good idea to know just how this software um, uh, works. So I'm not really sure why it's taking so long, but obviously working from home is checking my license and doing all the other good stuff. We'll give it a minute. There, it looks like something's coming up. So there's a lot of library files in here. There's files online that you can download uh, that are Revit files. And we need to look at two different types of files. There's projects and there's families. And a family, think of a family as just part of a project, but it could be an object. It could be a desk. It could be a lamp. It could be a light switch. It could be um, any type of product you can imagine, a 2 by 4 uh, structural lumber, a piece of steel framing. All of that can be a family, and we can build those families. We can use families that are already created in libraries on Revit. Um, and, uh, and to start out, we're actually going to build a family to start with one of our first projects. All right, hopefully this thing is up and cooking. Maybe it's because I'm recording. It's taking up some of my memory. So one of the projects that we... Uh, See if I can maximize this thing a little bit more for us once she gets up. There we go. So this is the interface that you see. It's basically broken down into three sections. We have our project section. We have our families. You can see some of the items here that are in the family. And we have resources. And this has some videos and some help files and some starting videos. Uh, what we're going to do is open up that drawing that it's actually this one, basic project. And it's kind of a big file, so we'll have to give it a minute to open up. But I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I've created a folder on my desktop for this file. I could just grab it from there, but I wanted to. Um, so here's our Revit basic book files. We're looking for basic project, RVT. And we're just going to say open up. And again, it's about a 16 megabyte file, so it's going to take a few minutes or less, hopefully, to open this thing up. And usually once it's open, it'll run fairly efficiently. But there's just a lot of information in here. And what I want to do is kind of walk you through. It, there's a lot of items in Chapter 1 that this goes through, and I'm just going to hit on some of the highlights, and then we'll move right into... Um, the, uh, 
I think it's end with chapter two as the second exercise. Yeah, it's lesson two, mass elements we're going to work on too. So here's a drawing. This is actually all one model. These are images that have been taken from the model. And you look over here on the left, this is our project browser. So it has floor plan levels one and two and a site plan. It has some three-dimensional views and it has some elevations. Let's look at each one of these. So if I look at, I want to look at floor plan level one. So I'm just going to click here, double click it and it will take me to floor plan one. This is the same three-dimensional model that we're looking at right now. So here's our floor plan. A lot of the things are similar to AutoCAD. Um, being able to zoom in with your wheel. You may have to click in the window to do it. Um, and this just shows our floor plan. You can see our door numbers, door swings, architectural walls, some furniture in here. There's also a key as to what these mean as far as the legend goes. We want to see what's on level two. We can click here and it will flip us to level two, which is in our bedroom area. See a corridors, two bedrooms, a master bedroom, a deck, and some staircases. It's kind of a funky looking house. Then we can look at the site plan. And we can see here's our site plan. There's our topographical information. We've got some trees out here, and these are all tags, so they're identified as to what type of tree they are. There's actually three windmills out here on the side to uh, provide some power, apparently. Um, and we can actually, if I hold down my shift key, I can pan and, uh, oops, hold down control. We'll zoom in and out or the wheel. One of these will help me pan. Which one is it? Guess I got to grab my oops. Too many windows open here. I'll just close these out. No, it's just this is that's because it's just the 2D model. That's why it won't let me spin it. So you can just move around and zoom in and out. So this is the 2D view of the topographical map. Now, if I look at the 3D view, I'll skip down to the bottom here. Here's our three-dimensional view of the model of the the house. So we can see it's got some ground. Now I can spin it around, hold down my shift key in my middle wheel. We can spin it, rotate it. We can still zoom in and out. Still thinking. So it's zooming in and out, pivot up and down, look through the model. And we can look at some individual um, three-dimensional views that the uh, author has created from this model. Here's a view here. This is from the approach. Here's the from the yard. Here's a look inside the kitchen. Taking it a second. There it is. So here's our kitchen area, living room, our section perspective. We've taken a section right through the inside of the building, so we actually cut the building right in half. We've got a solar analysis, so we can look at how the sun is going to appear on the building during certain times of the year. So again, we can spin it around, we can look at it certain times of the day, we can see the sun is at this point up here, it's 1.31 p.m. on this particular date, so it shows how the shadows are going to fall on the building in this particular area of the world. We have our straight-up two-dimensional drawings. Here's an east elevation, a north elevation, a south elevation, and a west elevation, all taken from the exact same model. The same model has created all of these. We have building sections. So this is a section right through the building, a longitudinal section. So we've sliced it in the other direction. We have a stair section. 
We also have some details and sections. Here's a typical wall section. And uh, here's a, I'll just go down, typical foundation detail. You know, there's not a lot here, but you can actually add some stuff to it. We have some legends. Uh, and down here are sheet files. So these are actually the architectural sheets that would be created. So here's our title sheet. This is what we started out with. We have our site plan sheet. So you can see they've added the solar study and the site plan here along with their planning schedule for what they want for trees. We've got our border around the outside. You also notice these little question marks. If I click on that, it gives me a little, I think it edits it. Oh, it's a title line. Now it's probably on the site plan itself. Those are just links to different areas. Um, and we have some some Revit links, some families. These are all pieces that we've put into the building, casework, ceilings, conduits, curtain systems. Let's go back now. And up here at the top, we have our properties. So I'm on my sheet, so it's showing me the properties of my sheet. Let's go back to level one. We'll take a look at this. And I want to know, what is this? If I click on it, you'll notice this floor plan changes. And it's an M concrete round column with drop caps. M100. I have no idea what it's doing. It's some kind of a structural piece in there, so I'm not really sure. So if I wanted to see what that looked like, you can see I've got an elevation marker here. So there's my um, elevation 2, which is probably my east side. Um, and you can see up here I've got a section view, A104. If I don't want to go to A104, I can just double click this, and it will actually take me to that section and show me what that looks like going through. And here, if I zoom in, there's a, that wall section that we looked at. So I can double click this and it'll show me what that wall section is. Show me my lines and where everything is located within the building. Now, how do they create these? Um, let's go back to level one again. And just, if you again, if you go through the chapter, you'll notice there's a lot of tools. This, these tools at the top are your quick tools. So they can set your line weights thick or thin, just like you did in AutoCAD. Um, close hidden windows. We can uh, default to the 3D window. Um, there's some other things. You can do camera views, text, annotation, dimensioning, measuring, are all quick tools up here. They're also listed down here where you've got architectural items, walls, doors, windows, components, columns, roofs, ceilings, floors curtain system, stairs, railings, text, model text actually, model lines, and some uh, different ways to create shaft openings and um, set planes and whatnot. In our structure, we've got beams and columns and structural walls, um, systems such as um, uh, electrical, mechanical, ductwork, plumbing fixtures, cable trays, um, outlets in the walls, light fixtures. Uh, we can insert other items from outside this, including AutoCAD files if we want to. Annotation, just like in AutoCAD, it's dimensioning um, and, and um, noting and putting tags on doors and windows. Uh, we have some massing and site uh, elements, some an analysis tools and collaboration tools, modification tools. Here's You'll recognize this as our move, copy, rotate, mirror, offset. Uh, a line, trim, all of these, and there's our scale tool. So we'll use all of these in creating our projects. So let's say I want to know what this thing is used for. So I can come back here to my view, select section, and I'm just going to take a line and I'm going to draw it right down. Whoops, not that one. Yes, I know none of the elements were in there. Let's try it again section. I want to be over here far enough. So I'm going to drag that all the way through, bring it here. Okay, so now I want to see what that thing is. So I'm just going to double click here. Might have to hit escape first. There we go. So there it is. It looks like it's this thing here, that concrete column. You can see the cap on it. So that's why it is. It's down in the basement, but actually shows up through the floor there. It's some kind of maybe a chimney foundation or something like that that might be in place. See some of the kitchen elements down here. So that's just how easy it is to create a section view 
of that area by just clicking and drawing a line through. If we go back here to level one again, you can still see that we can actually take this object and we can move it. We can slide it ahead. So I just want to look at what's right here. And I only want to look, the distance I want to look is just to this point right here. Click it off. When I double click this now, getting a totally different view now because all I'm seeing is this space right here. So we can clip and adjust those views any way we want to. Same way with elevations. Let's go back to our level view one. And let's say I want to see what an elevation would look like. If I'm looking from this, if I'm standing here and looking in this direction. So I can do an elevation. And I'm just going to select a point right here. That's where I'm standing. Hit escape. And I'm going to grab that elevation. And I'm going to see if I can twist it. Let's rotate it. So I'm going to take it this way and I'm going to rotate it. So it look looking in this direction. Yeah, it doesn't want to rotate for me. See if I can just select it and rotate. There we go. So now I got a rotate uh, a rotated view looking right into this corner. If I just double click this, that's what I'd be seeing. So it doesn't really give me too much. Let's take another look at it and see why. So we can see if that's I can spread it out. I'm, just, I'm going to delete it. Yeah, okay. Well, let's try it one more time. So let's spread it out this time. Should have... Widen it out. Doesn't want to let me rotate it. Try it this way again. Now I widen it out. Let's just see what it looks like now. There we go. So now we can see more of the trees. And you can actually grab these lines and actually extend. If it's not wide enough, you can ex increase or decrease the width of these so it covers more of the area that you're looking for. But that's an elevation looking at an odd angle into the structure, which somebody might want to see. You know, sometimes you're just using these to create perspective. So if we take that out now, let's go back to our level one. And let's say I wanted to say, what would it look like in a perspective view? Rather than having this view here as just a straight elevation, I want to make it look like a camera. I want to make it look like I'm standing there. So if I take this 3D view tool and say camera, and it's going to tell me you always want to watch what's happening up here at the top. It's perspective. My offset, this is in metric. Uh, it's actually telling me how high I am off the ground, which is normally. So there's a little camera on my cursor. I'm just going to left click here. And I'm going to drag this out. So this is what I'm looking at with my cursor. And that's the way I'm going to point my camera. When I do that, it actually takes me right to that perspective. So now I'm getting a three-point perspective, an actual visual camera view of what that will look like. Okay? I mean, it's, it's sometimes modeling this is difficult, but getting around in the model once you've got it built is really easy. We can also change this to a realistic view so we can see some of the colors and the lighting and the shadows on the screen by just changing this element down here. It's either realistic, shaded. So I can go to a shaded view. It's a little quicker. If I go to a wireframe, I mean it, phew, you know, right? It's going to knock you over. So you can stay with hidden lines. Uh, if we go to realistic, it does a nice job. We can also turn on the shadows. So if I click this on, it actually, whoops, clicked it on and clicked it off. So now we're seeing shadows so they take a little more memory. Sometimes you don't want to keep those on all the time. And uh, we can change the light uh, of, of day. If I can go to my sun settings, I can say, I want to still, 
and I want it to be in uh, let's get a location here so we'll see what this house would look like in just get a site oops it's looking on the internet now so it's actually gonna probably take me to Google Earth but anyway to a location. I'll just drop this down. I'll do a search. See if we get anything other than Boston in here. Yep. So they got a little map down here, but it's not opened up right now. Maybe just because I don't have the Hang on, but uh, let's check this. Default city list. Maybe that's what I need. Yeah, whatever. Now if I drop this down. There we go. Let's put this in. Oh. Carson, California. Or you can just put in your latitude and longitude. And, uh, and just say, okay. Now we can give it a time of day. I want to see what it's going to look like at 3 p.m. in the afternoon on uh, today's date. And we'll just say apply. You notice that the light changed on this now. It's a little darker because my son's probably out on the other side. Now we can see this guy. So I'm assuming the light's on the other side. Let's take a look at what that would look like from over on this side. So let's take another camera view from over here. Still thinking. Come on, camera. There it is. So look from here down across here. Or am I behind something? I see footings. Let's try it again. What was I behind? Must be, oh, it's that retaining wall over here. I think. Let's do it from the site plan. So you can see my shadows are in this direction. We'll go 3D view, camera. And we'll try it from this direction right here. That looks better. Kind of behind the trees and it's all open. You can see the foundation in behind there. But if I want to just pull this around now, and I can elevate myself up just a little bit by just rotating this model. And now when I change this to a realistic view, we should see more of the light coming in on this angle. So you can see our shadows coming in. And uh, we can turn the, actually turn the shadows on so we can see them. Thinking about it, there they are. So you can see the shadow from these poles leaning across here. You can see the reflection of one of those, I believe, in the window. Uh, so there's a lot of different things we can do with this. Um, and now we can see that our trees are showing up much more. Uh, so we can, if we were doing a perspective, we could pull this up to the bottom. And actually, if I take this little tool here, rendering dialog, we can do a... Um, a rendering and we'll set it to medium just to see how it uh, acts and we're going to put it on just the sun only if we had artificial lights we could put it on we'll just say render this and it may take a few few minutes to run this through but you can see it's working on it and as it goes it will create um, you can see it's rendering up at the top. So hopefully it doesn't take too long. Usually when it gets to 50%, it'll start blocking out the rendering and you'll start seeing the actual image. And this is where we'd really get uh, what we would look at for a real high-end uh, rendering of the project uh, to be able to put on the cover sheet or use as a presentation for somebody that was using this as a project. But there's really a lot of cool stuff that we can do with this and... Uh, Again, we'll just give it a minute and, uh, you know, so play around with this. So we should be getting on something that's a lot more realistic. We should see a lot more reflections in the windows. 
of things that are happening. You can see inside the house there now, uh, the couch and whatever's down in the basement. So it's always kind of a surprise when you get this done and you can once it's done you can adjust the exposure just like you would do in Photoshop or one of those other types of programs. And this is just medium so it's not really doing at that high resolution or that high a resolution I should say. almost done and you can actually put your own backgrounds back here if you wanted to set this at your own home site uh, for instance so that that's done if I wanted to make some adjustments to it at this point I could come in and say well it's a little I want it a little bit darker so I could pull this in this direction and hit apply it should darken it up that's highlights exposure darker there we go. So you can darken things up. You can change the shadows to lighter, darker, your mid-tones. Highlights are brighter. This is a little darker. Hit apply. And it'll make the changes. So anything you want to do after the fact, you can make it happen. And you can show it in the model or you can save it uh, to the project. And if I hit save on this one, it's called 3D View 3.1. So now if I come down here, you'll look and see that I have 3D View 3.1 approach all of these were done in the same method so we can save these renderings and then they become part of the drawing that we can actually drag and drop onto a sheet so all our output if we're going to paper is going to show up on this sheet area down here okay so it's really easy to use each thing is set up differently but again explore take walks around just play around with this thing and see some of the things you can do uh, with the finished product as far as how you can output these and, and make some really neat um, uh, projects, um, even for stuff you want to try at home, if you want to design your own place. I mean, this is really a nice, easy um, tool to use once you get used to the, the, the methods. Now, some things are a little different in AutoCAD. Uh, for instance, selecting items. If I select this item and I want to select another one, I can hit my control, have to hold down the control key to select multiple items. Um, so that's one thing, whereas with AutoCAD you just left clicked and selected on each individual item and just kept adding them up. So, you know, some things are a little bit different, but you'll get used to it really quickly, I think. Always you want to keep those properties in the project browser open. Um, so, and, and somebody's always losing the project browser. If I close this, hopefully I can find it again. Uh, if I go up here to view manage oh, I forget where it was oops right here type properties now oh, that's properties oh well I'll find it put it back I'll let you know in the next video. So in the next video, I'm going to stop this one here now. Um, let's do a quick, quick look. I might as well get used to it because everybody's going to accidentally delete theirs at some point. So I just hit the help file. Clinton Trump lead in. I don't need that. So th there are a ton of help items. There's tons of videos out there to help you with with uh, with Revit.
project browser in the view tab windows panel user interface drop down project browser there it is get it back okay remember that user interface under the view window project browser um, so when I forget you guys can help me remember because I always try to keep them up there I should, shouldn't have taken it out but that's okay so again a lot of stuff you can uh, work with here down here at the bottom just like in AutoCAD these are ways to turn lights on and off we can also make things disappear um, we can hide items so if I wanted to say this item here if I right click I can say hide in view elements or I can say right click and say hide in view category so all of my grids get turned off but just like turning levels on and off because we don't have layers and levels here it automatically puts things in the right level for you based on what you're modeling but so if I want to see what it is I can come here and it says reveal hidden elements and they show up in red so I can bring them back and I can select it and just say right click and say unhide in view category and then I can write I have to right click on this one unhide in view elements and now if I come back down here and take that off all my elements are back so you can turn elements on and off by just using that function and still be able to um, uh, bring them back anytime you want so if things get a little cluttered you can say oh, I just don't want to be able to see that stuff right now I'll bring it back later and sometimes you often do that um, so again I'll let let that go for now um, and uh, and then we'll uh, pick up on chapter two I want to go through one of the family items uh, we're going to create a family and there's a little exercise in the book that uses just a small file so I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this out and I will stop this video and we'll start another one we'll have them both available for you shortly so bear with me shift <laughs>